I'm going to show you how to install Elementary OS on a Chromebook. This is a C710, kind of old and obsolete at this point, but hey, it was really cheap when it was new and used it for a while. Um, last time I had it um, going, um, I had um, Ubuntu on it, but it was on the tiny little 16 gig solid state drive it came with, and it worked okay, but I had to do a lot of patches to it. Anyways, I've swapped out the hard drive, the 16 gig, I swapped it out for this uh, 60, 60 gig. Doesn't really say 60G anywhere on it except right there, 60G at the end of the part number. And I hate OCZ, uh, but whatever. So here's a, uh, as you can tell, this thing is uh, hollow. This hard drive did not fit inside the machine until I removed it from its case. So inside here, I've got a bare hard drive. I stuck it inside of a uh, static bag before sticking it in there so it doesn't short against the case. But uh, uh, it went in just fine. It's a uh, standard SATA port on it, so just plugged it in and uh, away we go. Let's, let's power it up real quick. I've uh, replaced the original firmware with CBIOS. If you Google around, you'll find a link. To, you'll find a lot of people talking about how to install normal Linux on a C710. And the first thing you need to do is put real BIOS on it. So this is C BIOS. It's an open source BIOS. And uh, it, it works great. It just makes it more of a real computer. Okay, here we are at my desktop. I've got the uh, thumb drive. It is a 8 gig, um, just a USB thumb drive. This is my uh, machine right here. Let's see, some way this thing opens. Oh, it's this one. There we go. There's the USB port. Stick that in there. And uh, I've actually already done this, so you're going to use the DD command. You're going to download the elementary OS image after you give them some money because they, uh, they put a lot of work into this. You can see I'm running it on here. So uh, the command I typed in is sudo dd input file if, and it's in the current directory dot slash elementary OS freea amd64. And uh, the latest to ISO, or at least it was when I downloaded it. Um, output file OF equals dev sdb. You're going to want to make sure that you've got the right drive when you do this. You don't want to wipe one of your hard drives. But, uh, yeah, block size BS 4096, 4K block size is pretty good. So you hit that, and uh, it takes a little while. My stick can write at four, at five megs per sec, roughly. So that's how long it took. It took um, 187 seconds. That was pretty quick, actually. So then you uh, you just go and yank the thumb drive out, and now we can go boot off of it and install Elementary OS on our Chromebook. Okay, you'll have to bear with me shaking the camera all over because I can't find my tripod. Not that my iPhone 6 fits in it properly anymore anyways. Okay, so we got the USB stick with uh, elementary OS S yeah, installer on there. So I'll fire up the laptop. As soon as the BIOS comes up, hit escape. Choose the USB stick. Doesn't get any easier than that. And it is now booting. Got some blinky lights going on over here. Here we go, it's now booted. Now it's going to ask us if we want to try it or install it. Um, the touchpad does not appear to work, but that's really a good thing. Uh, there's a module that you install to get this stupid touchpad to work. But, let's see, I've got a mouse hooked up to it, a USB adapter. So that's how I use this thing anyways. I only like the touchpad, so we tell it we want to install it. And get it on my network here. Connected. Ta da! It automatically detected the Wi Fi in this thing. And the Wi Fi just works. Continue. Okay. All three lights are green. Download updates while we're installing, and yeah, third-party crap is nice. Continue. Preparing. 
and install. Um, okay, it says there's already stuff on this disk because this disk was used. I'm going to erase and install. Not going to encrypt it. We'll go ahead and use LVM. And install now. So, uh, you may have noticed while I was typing in the Wi Fi password, the keyboard just works. So, that's nice. I believe that there was some issue with getting the keyboard to work. Um, but uh, it just works. Okay, lucky me, I'm in the right time zone. That's a US keyboard. Okay, watch this. I'm setting up my daughter's account, so, you know, there's an account for a six-year-old, and yeah, I should teach her better password habits, but nobody's going to get into this thing. A, B, C. One, two, three. Fair password. Are you kidding me? A, B, C, one, two, three. And that's a fair password. Not on my planet, it's not. Anyways. We'll go ahead and log in automatically and uh, continue. We'll come back when this gets done installing, but uh, it's copying from the SD, uh, the flash to the uh, SSD, that SSD. So, away we go. It's fully installed now. Um, this will be the first boot after the install, so it may not be fair, but I wanted to see how fast this thing boots up now with the uh, performance solid state drive in there. Okay, we're through the BIOS, and there's an ISE. And there's desktop. That was pretty quick. So, it's getting on the Wi-Fi, it's connected to the Wi-Fi. It's the mouse. Okay, I'll close that. You can see sound is working. Um, it sees Bluetooth, which I don't think worked previously. I did not know this thing had Bluetooth. So that's cool. Um, it sees a battery. I had to install a plug-in to do that last time. Let's see if these uh, keyboard shortcuts work. No. Nope. Uh, function. Nope. I had to add a keyboard shortcut to do that last time, so that's no big deal. Oh, Midori. I hate Midori. I'll install Chrome on this immediately. So, everything's up and running. Seems to work nicely. Cool. The applications. There we go. So, here we have it. Um, a normal operating system on your Chromebook. Um, these things are probably about free at this point. You shouldn't pay more than 100 bucks for one of these. You can get a, uh, a 32 gig SSD for, well, no, I think you can get a 64 gig for $40. So yeah, that's what this is, is a 64 gig. I got it with a, uh, another computer that was inside that thing. <clears throat> and I'm just using that as my router since it only draws five watts of power. So it's got the 16 gig drive in it now and it's running PFSense. So anyways, here we go. We've got uh, nothing on here right now. I'll go ahead and install some apps. Let's, um, go to the terminal and see. Disk space, DF. Um, yeah, not bad. Looks like we're using 22% of the drive. Not bad. Um, this thing's got um, mem. No, it's free, isn't it? We want free. There we go. It's, um, it's got two gigs of RAM in it right now, but um, I had four gigs in it at one point and pulled it out from my other laptop. But it's got two slots, so you put two four gig sticks in here and have eight gigs of RAM. And this is a perfectly usable machine still. So, good little laptop. I like it because it's small and light. So, and then back when it was new, it was 200 bucks, so you couldn't beat the price. Um, C720 would be a very similar process to this. Um, as I recall, it's a lot less upgradable. I don't think you can put a better hard drive in it. Or maybe the RAM is soldered on board. Maybe both. Uh, it just wasn't... The battery life on it is way better. It's eight hours instead of like three on this thing. But uh, 
not being able to upgrade it is a lot harsher. So this one's more utilitarian. That one's more usable, I guess, for use as a laptop with that battery life. But anyways, that's that. Hope this helped.